come. And that one would be raised up and he would guide his people back yes, to themselves. Yes. Brothers and sisters, we have a representative of God in our midst. That's right. Why is he a representative of God? Because he carries the truth of God in his mouth. He's a representative of God's divine messenger to us. Why? Because he carries the truth of the divine messenger in his mouth. He is a representative of the most powerful, the most dynamic, the savior of black people in 1989 going into 1990, a special representative and assistant to Minister Louis Farrakhan. Why? Because he carries the words of Minister Farrakhan in his mouth. He's back and he's black by popular demand. Let's give him a round of applause. Minister Khalid Abdul Muhammad. Sabia Muhammad, a black hand. And Brother Charles X from Pasadena, was he up before? Let's give both of them a black hand. And Brother Malik Farrakhan, let's give him a black hand. You got a better hand than that? All praise is due to Allah. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. I bear witness that regardless to land or label or language, there is but one God. I bear witness to Osiris. I bear witness to Moses, to Jesus, to Muhammad the first and the last. And I bear witness to all of the great worthies who have come in the great line of divine. We greet you, my beloved and beautiful black brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. We are very honored and very happy to have you to come and spend this Sunday evening with us. If you would have been with us last Sunday, you would understand why it's difficult for me to make the next statement. But on the eve of a new year, in fact, if you were here last Sunday, you know that we're not sure what year it is. After we went through the way that these devils have messed up the calendars and the time and the dates, one time he celebrated the new year on March 1st. And now it has been changed to January 1st. And we went over the fact of how he had shifted the days and weeks and months around and how Julius Caesar named the month Sextilius after himself and called it July. And how the Emperor Augustus changed Quintilius to the month of Augustus, or August, after himself. And took a month out of February to add that to the month of Quintilius that he had changed to name it after himself August so that he would have an equal number of days in his month or as many m days as Julius Caesar had in his month. We went through the encyclopedias. We went through the history book. How many of you were here last Sunday? So some of you I'm sure are still trying to determine how old you really are. What your birthday really is. And if it's really 2.30 right now, or since he changes the time to daylight savings time, and this kind of, just peck of wood changing the time, any damn time they get ready, we don't know if it's 2.30, 3.30, or 1.30. But we know one thing. We're all here together, under one roof. Our family here together. Some Christians in the audience. Muslims in the audience, Christians of all persuasions, Muslims of all persuasions, black nationalists, some socialists, some communists, 
some black people who come from many, many different walks of life, but the family together under one roof. I pray Allah that today we will be able to move through this subject and not take a lot of time. I promise not to be long, but I promise that I must be strong. My subject today is the goddamn white man. That's my subject. All praise is due to Allah. So fasten your seatbelt, because we're ready to get, get busy up here. My subject is the goddamn white man. I can't bite my tongue with that. I can't tiptoe with that. I can't pussyfoot with that. I can't tiptoe to the through the tulips with that. I said my subject is the goddamn white man. You say, but I thought I had come to a religious place. You say, I thought I had come to a place where people believe in the Bible and believe in the Quran and believe in God and believe in all of the prophets and messengers and those who have come in the divine line of divine. So how could he have such a subject, the goddamn white man? Why, it's sacrilegious. Why, it's blasphemy. Why, it's using the name of God in vain. Isn't that what some of you are saying? You can shake your pretty black head and you, you don't have to raise your hand. You say that's blaspheming against God. But we want you, for the time that you're here, to sit back and relax, keep an open mind. And as the Bible says, let us reason together. Let us do what? Let us reason together. Now we should define our terms. If the subject is the goddamn white man, the first word in the subject is the. Is that right? The. Let's get some white chalk and go to the blackboard. <laughs> the first term, we got it up here, so we'll just underline it, is the. Or the. The. The in English grammar is the definite article. Anytime you say the anything, it standardizes it. It epitomizes it. It sets it aside and pretty much makes it a cut above everything else. This is the standard by which everything else in that category or class is to be judged. So if we say the goddamn white man, then that means there's a, no other goddamn man anywhere that can compare with this goddamn man. All right, but we want to look at it, though. God. God is the supreme being. Is that right? Not just any being, but God, using the definite article again, is the supreme being. God is not a supreme being. God is what? The supreme being. Nothing else to compare with the power, the wisdom, the majesty, the glory of Almighty God. So he is the supreme being. He is the creator, not a creator. He is what? The creator. He is the former, the shaper, the molder, the fashioner of everything that is in existence. He is the divine mind of the universe. Is that him? And he is called in many languages by many names. And you black man and you black woman, you have always believed in that God. Never has there been a time when the black man and the black woman, could you free me a little bit? Man and the black woman have not believed in a God. Right. Now, I know the white man has told you that when he found us in Africa, we were swinging through the trees, eating bananas and eating each other, and hollering ooga booga. Right. And that we were savages, right. living on a beast level. And that he brought us to America and civilized us. Right. That he did us a favor by bringing us to America. But such is not the case because white folks 
do lie. We have always believed in the supreme being. We have always believed in the creator. We have always believed in the shape of the molder and the fashioner, that one who called and willed everything into existence. We have always believed in the divine mind, the infinite intelligence, the power, the force that is behind the cosmological and universal order of things and who set it all to a balance and set it all up according to divine law. We have always believed in that God. You go to one part of Africa and we call him Nakumpo. You go to another part of Africa, we call him Umvelinko. You go to another part of Africa, we call him Umkulunkulu. What we call him? Say it again. Let me hear you say it one more time. Nakumpo. In another part of Africa, we call him Shango. In another part, we call him Oshun, Ogun, Ilegba, Babaluaye, Oludumare, Obatula. Another part of Africa, we called him Pata. And we, there, in the holy city of what is called Egypt by the white man, but it's called Kemet by us, which means black. In the ancient nation, African, black African nation, Kemet, or what is called Egypt by the Greeks, in the holy city of Abydos, in the sacred temple of Seti Wan, there on the walls in what the white man calls hieroglyphics, but what we call in the language of Kemet, the Meduneta. In the language of the Meduneta, not hieroglyphics, you can read it on the walls. And it dates back 4,100 years, some say 5,000 years. You can read on the walls the first creation story. Yes, it predates the creation story of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It predates the creation story, or it predates the beginning of the Holy Quran, so it pulls both of them together. Where a God among the African black men and black women that we call, again, showing you that we always believed in the one God. When we say Umbelin God, we hold up one finger. When we say Umkulunkulu, you'll see the African holding up one finger. Why are you holding up one finger, African? I'm holding up one finger because Umkulunkulu is the one God. I'm holding up one finger because Nakum Paul Umbelin God. And the others, they represent one God, Olufu. Ileda, who is the feminine representation of that one God. Because we never had a hang up in Africa. The God and the goddess always go together. You can't talk about a universe unless you talk about the God and the goddess. When you talk about Olufu, you got to talk about Ileda. Because it is from the holy bond of Olufu and Ileda that you get uh, Oludumare. You can't talk about the god Osiris unless you talk about the goddess Isis. Or you can't talk about Osa unless you talk about Aset and the offspring, the divine, immaculate conception that comes from Ileda and Olufun, Oludumare is the divine, immaculate conception. And that holy one, that child that comes from the black Madonna Isis or Iset from the union, spiritual union with Osa or Osapus is Horus according to the Greeks, but in the Meduneta his name is Heru. So we always have the God and the Goddess. If you were going to Kemet or to Egypt now, you will see where the white man always tries to chisel the female out. He always tries to destroy the black Goddess and leave the God by himself. Because you ain't got no God unless you've got the Goddess. You don't have no balance unless you have the two of them working together for the balance and the harmony of the universe. All praise is due to Allah. We are on the 
the one God and we're on the fact that we always believed in that one God. And so there in the holy city of Abydos, at the sacred temple of Seti Wan, in the so-called hieroglyphics or in the Medunetta, we find the first creation story where the God, the black God, what kind of God? Black. Where the black God, Ptah, through authoritative utterance and divine will and creative force and power right. gave utterance and called and willed the universe into existence. Right. And so the Holy Quran says that he said, Kum Fayakum, Kum Fayakum, be, and it is. Right. Be, and it is, Kum Fayakum. And the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and he said let there be this and let there be that and let there be light and there was light and the light it says then began to harmonize with the darkness so let there be light kum fire kum be and it is is the authoritative utterance that the Africans do you read in the hieroglyphics or the Meduneta that Ptahotep through authoritative utterance willed and called the universe into existence. In another part of Africa we called him Amin. In another part of Africa we called him Amin Ra. In another part of Africa we called him Aten. All over Africa we believe in the one God. We have always believed in the one God. The one power and force behind the universe. The white man ain't never had to teach us nothing about no God. The white folks don't believe in no God. The only God that the white man believes in is himself. What he says on the back of the dollar bill, in God we trust. It's him that he's trusting in. When it was time to go and raid Noriega in Panama, he didn't call a meeting of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Negro Uncle Tom, boot-licking, butt-licking, puppet Colin Powell, the Negro and his staff, and call them all in. And say, we're getting ready to attack Panama. Let us bow our heads and say a word of prayer. Do you think Bush did that? Do you think he said, our father, who art in heaven? Do you think he did that? When he got ready to attack Brother Maurice Bishop, the leader of the New Jewel Movement in Grenada, do you think Reagan and the boys called a meeting of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Senate and Congress and had a moment of prayer before they did it? No, and if they did, they were doing it to themselves. They said, load up the troops, the guns, and the ammunition, and let us go. When it's time to launch one of their spaceships, they don't say, let us bow our heads. They say, ten, nine, eight, seven, six. They start the countdown and counting, right? He believes in no God except himself. And so he will make up a mystery God, but then he'll give you a son that looks like him with blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin and tell you that if you see the son, you've seen the father because the father is in the son and the son is in the father. So if you see a white man as the son, your subconscious has to suggest to you that the father must be white some kind of way also to produce a boy like that. Your mind has to say that to you. And here, as we look at it, we again have always believed in one God. In fact, all of the other people of the earth get their religion from us. The black, the brown, the red, the yellow, all of them get their religion from us. I got a bag back there with a big book in it that I need right at the table. But it's in the kitchen, I think. Brother Jamal knows where it is. No matter what land you go to, they believed in what we had given to them. You go among the Mexican-speaking people, they believe in a black savior, a black messiah, who has a strange set of circumstances surrounding his origin into the world, who comes from a black Mary or a black Madonna. I just need the book out. I didn't want to give Pier 1's a, a plug up here. Pier 1 imports a plug up here. 
<laughs> Among the Greeks and the Romans, they always believed in a God that we had given to them. In Greece, it was Zeus, and Zeus was a black God. In Greece, they also had Apollo. You get to the Apollo Theater in New York. They had Apollo. Apollo is a black god. In Rome, they even worshipped a black woman as the goddess of Rome, Isis. In France, they worshipped her. Because when you study the etymological root of the term Paris and Paris in French, you will find that it is linked to the root of the name Isis and that at one time the city back down the wheel of time came from the name Isis. I'm talking about Paris. You had Fuhai of China, Zaha of Japan, and I mentioned those who speak Spanish. You had Quetzalcoatl. You had Krishna of India, which means the blue of the black skinned one, blue black skinned one, or the purple skinned one, Krishna of India. And you see many groups of white people throughout America today who worship the black god, Krishna. You see them with their head shaved and a little ponytail or a little ponytail, running up and down the street, beating a gong and hollering, Hare, Hare, Hare Krishna, whatever the hell they say. <laughs> they believe in a black god from India named Krishna. Everywhere you went in the world, Zeus, Apollo, Krishna, Buddha, all of them black. So we gave religion to the world. We gave morality to the world. We gave ethics to the world. We believed in an ancient system of morality and ethics and spirituality called in Kemet, Mayat. Mayat, truth, justice, order, harmony, balance, and reciprocity. Mayat, and the Mayatic balance that black people had in the black nation, in the black society, is what attracted the white people of Europe to follow this moral code called Mayat. Now, we who follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I bring you greetings today from his spiritual son and his representative in our midst, the man who is the fulfiller of his work and the extension of his work, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I bring you greetings from him of Assalamu Alaikum. When you study these two men, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, or the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you will find that they teach us of a book that is called the Old Testament, the Torah, and they teach us of the Injil, or the Bushra, or the New Testament, or the Good News, or the Gospel. They teach us of this entire book called the Bible, but we don't study this book from a white theology perspective. We study the Bible from a black theology perspective. We believe all praise is due to Allah. Really, when the truth is told, we believe the scripture when it says God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But we know that the spiritual is dependent on the material. And the material is dependent on the spiritual. That the two are dependent on each other. That you would never know the spiritual existed if the material didn't exist to manifest the spiritual to the material world. Huh? And you would never get any real function and benefit out of the material unless the spiritual was working in the material as the prime mover in and behind the material. So you can't have the material without the spiritual, and you can't have the spiritual without the material. That's the meiotic balance of the universe. That's what Professor George G.M. James is talking about in Stolen Legacy. That's what Dr. Ben is talking about in his great works that he has given to us. That's what Dr. John Henry Clark is talking about. Dr. Asa Hilliard. Yes, Dr. Jake Carruthers. Dr. Maulana Karenga. This is what the scholars among us is talking about. This is what Sheikh Antidia is talking about. This is what Dr. Ivan Van Sertima is talking about. This is what Dr. Richard King, Brother Carol Barnes, and many others this is what they are talking about 
when they tell us about this meiotic balance and the balance in the nature of the black man and black woman and how we gave religion and science and law and art and music and mathem mathematics and civilization and religion and ethics and morality to this no good cracker who was crawling around on his all fours in the caves and hills of Europe, a savage in Europe. All praise is due to our love. today after a cave man and after a cave woman that just crawled out of the caves and hills of Europe and walk around the day with an attache case smelling like Pierre Cardin and smelling like uh, Uchi and Gucci and Gucci and all that other stuff. This is a cave man. He spent 2,000 years, she spent 2,000 years in the caves and hills of Europe. I'm still talking about the goddamn white man. Spent 2,000 years in the caves and hills of where? E U R O P E. This man, Elijah Muhammad, and this man, Louis Farrakhan, they teach us that E U means caves and hillside. Europe, Eureka, you've heard the term. EU means caves and hillside. Rock is self-explanatory. They were roped or bound or confined within the caves and hills of Europe for 2,000 years. And for 2,000 years, this blue-eyed devil crawled around on his all fours. He ate his meat raw. They ate each other even. They ate dogs. They ate anything. They take tree limbs and bust an animal in the head or drop a rock or a boulder on the animal and bust the animal in the head. Blood everywhere, all in the mangy, diseased fur of the animal. Drag the animal back to the cave. And the little baby devils and the medium-sized devils and the mama devil and the daddy devil and the uncle devil and the auntie devil and the cousin devil and the grandma devil and the grandpa devil. All of them within start biting on the nasty hair and fur of this dead, bloody animal lying right there in the cave. They didn't know anything about fire. Hell, when they first discovered fire, they damn near ran off the cliff. Gee whiz, she Manini, what is this? Really, they couldn't make any, they couldn't even talk in those days. How many of you saw the movie Quest for Fire? Hold your black hands up. If you saw Quest for Fire, in Quest for Fire, you saw But they tell you you were a savage. They want you to believe that you were a savage. They walked around out in Ooga Booga. They're the ones that put the lie on us. But they were the ones who go, I ain't sign language and all kind of stuff. You could always talk. There's never been a time when you couldn't talk black man. And we know it ain't never been a time when you couldn't talk black woman. <laughs> Sister got something to say. Because she's the first teacher. The children, the babies, they learn the language from her. They don't call it the father tongue, they call it the what? the mother tongue instead of the other tongue. They call it the mother tongue because it is mother who fills them with the spirit of life. It is mother who inspires them, giving them inspiration and information that moves them along the course of life. And so they call it the mother tongue because the goddess is the one who breathes that life into them. Y'all still with me? We still talk about the goddamn white man. All of these thoughts running through my head, I don't want to miss anything. So, for 2,000 years he was in the caves and hills of Europe. They'd bring the old mangy animal in the cave and they would bite on the animal and eat the animal raw. Then they would leave the animal right there in the cave. And